If the title sounds familiar, that's because it is. I do plan on doing one of these videos every single year until Tesla stops growing this dang fast. But I also don't think it's clickbait, and I don't think it's deceptive, because genuinely, every single year that goes by, I see as being another big year for Tesla, and not just in terms of sheer delivery numbers. The poll brought some interesting results, kind of divided down the middle. I think overall, I tend to lean a tad bit more on the optimistic side now, after seeing Tesla time and time again beat expectations expectations on delivery, so I personally am going to vote that Tesla will deliver about 1.6 million vehicles in 2022. I know some out there are assuming 2 million or more. A lot of this is dependent on a lot of factors we don't know about yet, but certainly I don't actually think 2 million is that far-fetched, because according to sources familiar with the matter, Giga Texas should be looking at mass production within the next couple weeks. They've submitted approval for paperwork at most sections of the factory. I think the only corner that hasn't quite been approved yet is the 4680 production line, but already, thanks to Joe Tegmeyer and Jeff Roberts, we've been spotting people loading in more equipment to that section of the factory, and we've also heard from Giga Berlin that Tesla has submitted all of the necessary paperwork to start fully-fledged production, and it's just a matter of the German government going through all of this paperwork and actually approving it to begin. But employees that were moving to Germany or being hired at Giga Berlin were claiming that Tesla needed end-of-line drivers, you know, people to take the Model Y after it's done being built and drive it around by the start of January, which is pretty much right now. So, as excited as I am for 2022, there's still a lot of details we don't exactly know yet, but I think it's safe to say Giga Texas and Giga Berlin are through the majority of the construction that they need to start production, and I wouldn't be shocked if vehicle delivery started within the next couple weeks, because we've already seen a few performance Model Ys built out of Giga Berlin driving around in in the wild, so maybe for internal testing or employees or whatever are already driving these things. This is absolutely some of those final steps we see before production starts, but in my opinion, if I had to choose the one thing I was most excited for with Tesla in 2022, I know some people may say Cybertruck, some people may say Tesla Bot, or some people may say Tesla Dojo coming online and hopefully rapidly improving the self-driving technology. My answer has to come down to the 4680 battery, because I think this this battery in itself is what enables all of those exciting things we're looking forward to with Tesla to come to fruition. This battery was built from the ground up to have high cycle life, higher energy density, save on cost, save on weight, and of course prioritize the biggest problem that the EV sector is facing with electric vehicle adoption, which is production capacity. I'm so grateful that Tesla of all companies has got the science down as to what is preventing more and more electric vehicles from taking over, and it has nothing to do with the demand. It really doesn't even have much to do with range numbers or convincing enough people that electric vehicles are worth it. Look at the estimated deliveries. Enough people are convinced electric vehicles are the future now. It's just a matter of how do we build enough of these things, and I'm certainly most excited about this battery because it will say a lot about what Tesla is going to prioritize moving forward. Will Tesla prioritize profitability with the 4680 battery and just get around the same amount of range that Model Ys currently have and just hopefully build more of them? Or is Tesla going to introduce the 4680 and actually take advantage of all of these range increase opportunities that they detailed at Battery Day? If they do, we could be easily looking at, you know, a far higher range version of the Model Y that is actually cheaper for Tesla to build. And as the year goes on, they'll be able to scale up that production fast and actually start delivering high range vehicles in bulk instead of just the 400 mile range on the $90,000 Model S. Can you imagine how the market would respond if they started seeing Tesla sell and deliver vehicles with close to 400 miles of range and they only cost around $60,000 or less, I think that would change the EV space as a whole because it would prove to an even wider demographic of people that electric vehicles can achieve just as good a range of gas vehicles and still be relatively affordable, you know, once you start factoring in the cost of ownership and all that. Plus, as the 4680 is able to ramp alongside the Model Y, both at Giga Texas primarily and I think Giga Berlin will come along as well once their cell facility is done. That battery will get cheaper and cheaper per cell to build as more and more Model Ys are sold. And that's just going to be a domino effect that's going to put Tesla at an insane advantage over everybody else because the cell will be cheap and built to scale. So okay, it's one thing to say, all right, we have a 375 or 400 mile range Model Y selling for $60,000. That's pretty cool. That's impressive. But now, thanks to those cells that Tesla will have ramped 
ramped up, they'll be able to put those in hopefully a Cybertruck in the not too distant future. I'm super pumped and excited for the Cybertruck and I hope that they can start deliveries by the end of 2022, but I feel like the boy who cried wolf on that one, so I'm just gonna assume probably not and the Cybertruck will not be the primary focus of 2022. So unfortunately, I'm gonna push that one back a little bit, but thanks to the scaling effect of the 4680 battery, that's what's going to make the Cybertruck unbeatable when it comes to range numbers, when it comes to performance numbers. The weight savings of a structural pack combined with the exoskeleton are gonna be unreal. And I think just from aerodynamics alone, you'll probably see the Cybertruck be the most efficient pickup truck ever made. Far more efficient than the Hummer electric vehicle and definitely more efficient than the Rivian thanks to the heat pump technology, thanks to the 4680 structural pack and the exoskeleton not needing to be a traditional body on frame design. Those 4680 batteries are what's going to make the Cybertruck possible. It's what's going to make it achieve those range specifications that no one else can obtain. And yes, the Cybertruck will likely be more expensive than we originally thought, but for the durability, utility, and practicality you're able to get out of that truck, nothing else will come close. There will not be any vehicle that lightweight with range that good and with performance that good that can hold up against the elements as well as the Cybertruck can. So basically, the 4680 Model Y is going to walk into this market like it owns the place so that Cybertruck can run and kind of just demolish the pickup truck space. But it's not just the Cybertruck. Ramping up the 4680 battery is also going to allow for the Tesla Semi to, I think, really put a death to more and more diesel engines out there because this is by far one of those trucks that I have an insane amount of anticipation for because where I live, there's a lot of semi trucks. They're noisy, they're loud, they're dangerous. And of course, they account for a very, very large portion of all emissions that vehicles cause. So the more Tesla semis we get on the road, the better in my view. I don't care if Tesla is driving them, if Pepsi is driving them. Really doesn't make a difference to me as long as we're taking diesel semi trucks off the road and replacing them with electric versions. I'm happy because that's going to account for a large amount of emissions saved, not to mention the safety benefits of the Tesla Semi, I think are going to save lives. It's going to be hard to measure because you don't hear about stories of semi trucks not crashing into things, but thanks to the regenerative braking and the acceleration the Tesla Semi is capable of, plus the autopilot cameras and the self-driving software Tesla is going to bake into these trucks, I think they're going to have next generation precision when driving on the road and result in far less accidents than traditional semi trucks. And I'm hoping 2022 can actually be the year Tesla the semi deliveries start to begin. We've seen already a few production models testing around the Giga Nevada facility, so it may not be in high volume production, but I'm still very, very pumped to see some more Tesla semis on the road. And of course, everyone's biggest complaint with the Tesla semi is, oh, well, it's electric. That means it has to be super heavy and therefore it can't tow as much as a regular truck. But I keep reminding people, Tesla themselves has come forward and said on their last impact report that the Tesla semi has equal or better payload performance as traditional diesel semi trucks. And I think that that's because of the 4680 battery with its nickel based cathode, it's gonna have extremely good energy density and likely through some either casting press tech or some structural battery pack approaches to production. The Tesla semi is going to weigh shockingly little, like a lot less than what people are anticipating. And they'll likely be able to have a payload that is equal to that of their diesel alternatives. Couple that with the cost savings the Tesla semi offers with not having to worry about brake pad replacements, oil changes and the armored glass is going to result in less windshield fractures. And of course, you don't have to pay for freaking expensive diesel fuel because charging is going to be a fraction of the cost and it's only going to be a matter of installing mega chargers quickly enough. But like we've already seen at Giga Nevada, mega charger installations can go pretty freaking quick, especially much faster than installing a gas station of any kind. So what I realized is everything I'm excited for with Tesla moving forward kind of stems back to the 4680 battery and how they ramp that, how they deliver on that, and how how good the range numbers are on the 4680 Model Y. And of course, a lot of my hype probably stems from the fact that I'm planning on buying a Tesla of some kind in 2022. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm gonna buy a 4680 Model Y because the range might end up being worse than we think or the price might be astronomically higher than I expect. But still, if it goes the way I think it's going to go, it should be pretty freaking insane to see electric vehicles hitting range numbers this high at price points this low. And then of course, all of the vehicles that are in enabled by the ramping of this battery, I think is what's really going to change the game. I think especially the public perception of electric vehicles would change a lot if they knew that these semi trucks are completely electric powered. There's no gas, there's no diesel involved in any way, and they're still able to haul tens of thousands
thousands of pounds worth of payload up steep inclines and they're able to do it better than a diesel truck can and they're able to do it cheaper plus with 500 miles of range i think if the tesla roadster or the plaid model s didn't convince people that electric vehicles are the future i think the tesla semi will because that's something i've seen so many people doubt for decades of just the weight and the amount of energy it takes to move that much stuff it's just not going to work but tesla semi will prove that even heavier vehicles can be transitioned to electric once you have the cells cheap enough and light enough which the 4680 does allow for and of course i'm still excited for everything else going on with tesla i'm thankful that they're updating their cpus and gpus in their cars and i'm really really pumped to see if we can see some type of game changing growth with full self driving once dojo comes online because i gotta be honest i'm keeping up with all the videos covering fsd beta 10.6 10.7 10.8 and i keep coming back to the same conclusion which is it's very hard to see growth when one aspect of self-driving gets better and another aspect gets worse in between updates the car can perform worse in some areas and better in others it just makes me think like at this rate i don't see level four happening anytime soon i don't really care if elon says this year it's going to happen or not because he's been saying that for the past five years so i'm hoping when dojo comes online and they're able to train their neural nets much faster we could actually see a game-changing amount of improvement but right now it just feels like you know occasionally two steps forward one step back and then sometimes you get one step forward three steps back with certain updates it's a very very difficult problem to solve and i'm glad tesla is actively trying to pursue this field because it certainly could result in a lot of lives saved and of course my dream is just to have level three autonomous driving i just want to be able to own my own car but get inside and have it drive me wherever i want to go i don't really have much interest in turning my sixty thousand dollar car into a robo taxi that can drive strangers around and make me money because i don't want that many people using my car frequently and there's better ways to make money in my opinion that would likely require less babying of the car i'm gonna have to clean it i'm gonna have to deal with the messes people leave behind and i'm gonna have to change the tires if it's being driven around that frequently so that's okay i'll just keep my car to myself but seeing some type of major step change with fsd development would be exciting this year and i'm hoping dojo could allow for that of course feel free to let me know what you guys are all most excited for in 2022 for tesla down below i know many people are always like tesla energy is gonna do big this year and then it always ends up being kind of the not such big a deal i'm hoping the mega pack factory can put a dent in mega pack deployments but i just know tesla is aware that putting lithium iron phosphate batteries from china into their vehicles is probably going to be far more profitable than mega pack is so that's likely again going to be the priority for whatever batteries they have access to this year but once again i just want to say thank you to everyone on patreon that's helping me save up for a tesla of some kind later this year and to everyone who's just watching that helps too so take care have a great day